One look. That's all it takes to show you the wicked. Listen to this law of God. You go to church, brother? What, what denomination? What denomination? What's, what's the name of your church? I, I, right now, I don't, I don't go to church. I'm looking for church to go. All right, you used to go to church. Yeah. What church do you used to go to? I was in the Bronx. It's in the Bronx. What's the name? Like, is it Baptist, Pentecostal? Or did you go to a Baptist church? First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Every man pray or prophesy, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Read that again. Every man pray or prophesy. Having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. I will have to go to the third verse. So, Paul is explaining to us something about when we start to take notice that Christ is our Savior, God is our rule. All right? Pay attention. Verse 3. But I would have you know. So, Paul is saying in the Spirit, I would have you know that you're listening to this Bible right now. Read. That the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. Christ is your head. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. So if you have a wife, you are above her. You're the head. Read. And the head of Christ is God. So the head of Christ is God. God, Christ, man, woman. That's the order. Verse 4 again. Every man pray or prophesy. So now, when we're reading the Bible, we are prophesying God's words. We're confirming the words that's in this book. We're telling our people, we're warning them of their errors to correct it by repenting. Having his head covered, dishonoring his head. So now, while we teach you in this Bible, if you have your head covered, you are dishonoring your head. Who is above you? Huh? Before God. Huh? That's, that's, that's Christ. So you dishonoring Christ, so I mean you are dishonoring God. So now we're bringing this Bible out. So what should you be doing right now? Reading the Bible? No, we read it again. Verse 4. Listen. Every man pray or prophesy. We're prophesying the Bible to you. We're telling you what's in here. We're telling you to change your ways. Having his head covered. Having his head covered. Look around at the brothers here doing this work right here. What's the difference between us and you? Huh? Nothing? You sure? No. Look real good. Look at our heads. That's okay. the power of the Lord. What, what, what that? Uh, low cut? Huh? Low cut? Yes. Again, uh, with the head. Every look day. Out. So you don't know you're safe. Huh? Read it again. Listen, you gotta listen to the Bible. It's telling you. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. Having his head what? So what's the difference between us and you? Huh? You remember that day you covered? You ever had Oh, this is, this is a problem too? Yes. Oh, this is a problem. That's a law. Listen, read it again. Read it again. Every man pray or prophesy, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. So when you listen to God's words, you have your head covered, you dishonoring Christ. The understanding that's coming out of here is not even going to go through your mind. Guess what? Because you're not following the ordinance. They don't care about that. They lose. Give me the fear of the Lord. You can bring whatever you want to tell you want to bring out. Psalms 111, verse 10. We're going to explain why it's important. See what you did? It shows me you have a good spirit, brother. Because guess what? You're not doing it for us. We're showing you you're dishonoring Christ and God. You believe in Christ, don't you? You believe in God, don't you? So you're not doing it for us. You're doing it for the Most High. Lord's will, He will have mercy on you for this act that you just did just now. Read. Psalms chapter 111 verse 10. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So now, the Lord says you got to fear me. How do you fear me? Son, do not put a hat on your head while this word is coming out. If you don't fear God, you're like, yeah, well, I got to take off my hat. For what? So you don't fear God. The fact you fear God, you remove it, you show respect to the Most High God. Read on. 
and good understanding. And what? And good understanding. So when we bring this Bible out to you, if you don't fear God, you're going to stay here for hours with you. You're not going to understand what's coming out of here. Because what? You show God no fear. No fear, no respect. You're not going to get the understanding that's coming to you. You know? Have all day. Have all day. That do his commandments. So guess what? You just perform one of the commandments. God is commanding you to fall to remove your hat to show respect to Christ, respect to God when this word is coming out. So that's good. So you see the brother right here, he's listening. He got his hat off. He's listening. That word is going to resonate in his mind. His head is not covered. But is it the same thing for the woman? When you go home, are you going to tell you have a wife? No. When you do have a wife, are you going to tell her to remove her head? And cover her? Are you going to tell her that? First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5. But every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered is honored with her head. So what does that mean? Read it again, slow. But every woman that prays or prophesies. Stop. Every woman that is listening to the word of God or she's praying on her own with her head uncovered. She doesn't have her head covered like us. Dishonoring her head. So is it good for the woman to uncover her head when the word is coming out? Sister, is it good for the woman to uncover her head when the Bible is coming out? I'm closer. Once, once you listen, you're going to get the understanding. Read. But every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, the key word is uncovered, dishonoreth her head. Thank you, thank you. her head. For that is even all that, that word as if she were shaven. So, women adorn their hair. If I cut all your hair bald, you're not used to that style. Are you going to be proud walking around here or are you going to be a little ashamed because you don't like that look? You're going to be ashamed, right? So now, if you are, if we are prophesying to you, which you have uncovered, is that a good or a bad thing? It's a bad thing according to the Bible. We were just explaining to the brother, a man cannot cover his head, opposed to the woman has to cover her head. All right? So now, we're going to go through the same routine we go through with everybody. Who are you on the side, sister? I help you out. Where's your father from? Huh? From the tribe of Zebulon. Because the Bible says to explain to us how to identify our nation. This is how you identify who you are. Because in America, after all this, you forgot who you were. Could you explain what's going on here? Slavery. After slavery, our people don't know who they are. So now, coming back to God, he's explaining to you who you are and how to identify yourself. In these latter days, read that. Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. So all the Israel, all the children of Jacob was assembled together. And they declared their pedigree. Their pedigree, meaning their lineage. We mean their bloodline. How did they determine that? After their families, by the house of their fathers. After their families, by the house of your father. So if your father was so-called black American, you would have been of the tribe of Judah. You can make the mother the sword. The father has the seed. Right? Women carry seeds? No. Our sperm is the seed. I'm just saying anywhere we plant the seed, that's what you get. If I have a mango seed, I got from Jamaica and planted in a year. I'm not talking about it. Huh? Yeah, I got the mango seed from Jamaica. That mango only grows in Jamaica. I took the seed and brought it to New York and planted in my garden. What kind of mango am I going to get? A Jamaican mango. 
So those people are known as the tribe of Benjamin. They're not Jamaicans. Do you know why we don't know all this today, sis? You ever been to church before? What? Uh, Catholic church? I was in a Catholic church too. And as a young boy, I had a lot of questions they couldn't answer. You bear with me. We're going to go step by step. And why we had questions that couldn't be understood. All right? First, uh, what you have to do? Uh, yeah, we're going to come back to Deuteronomy. Acts 17, verse 24. The book of Acts explained to us, because that's the New Testament system. A lot of churches, they go by the New Testament. They forgot about the Old Testament. But can you pick up a book and start reading it from the back and understand the whole book? You must read it from the beginning. Everything in this book makes sense and is valid. Read. Acts chapter 17 verse 24 Read God that made the world and all things therein That's the God we believe in The God we believe in we know he created everything on this planet That's right Everything was created by God That's right We see that he is Lord of heaven and earth Who else do we know that is Lord of heaven and earth But God all right, read. Dwelleth not in temples made with hands. So it's saying, in the New Testament, God does not dwell in these temples made with hands. What is a temple made with hands? What would you call that? Huh? Say it loud, sis. Don't be afraid. You got, you got it. That's right. Those so-called churches are temples that are made with man's head. Did God reach down and make that building? He didn't create that. He created the moon, the stars, the animals. He didn't create those buildings. Read that again. So God is saying something. Yeah, read. God that made the world and all things therein. Uh huh. Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, right? Well, it's not in temples made with hands. God does not dwell in these churches. We can say that both. Why? It's not my word. It's in Acts 17, 24. Why? How come he's not in those places? Huh? He didn't build them. So first and foremost, there's some way you have to establish the spirit of God. Where is that first place you must establish the Spirit of God? I would say in your heart. Ah, your heart. Your body. According to the Bible, the heart is referring to the mind. All right? We can prove that. The heart is referring to the mind. But your body, 1 Corinthians 3, 16, is the temple of God. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Read on. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, uh -huh. and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. So did that just say the Spirit of God dwelleth in a temple made with hands? He's dwelling in you. But there is a condition that your body must be in for him to dwell in you. What is that condition? must be in a state for God to say, I'm going in this temple today. Why? Because I want that temple to instruct this temple. This temple's not doing the right thing. But how could he use his temple when, what is the word? Defile. 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 Yes. This is a biblical word meaning unclean. Dirty and filthy, you are defiled. So if your temple is defiled, is that a place for God to dwell? So what condition must your body be in for God to dwell in you? When you go to the church and they baptize you, they dip you in water, does that make you clean from your sins? Not according to God. It does not make you clean. Ephesians 5, 26. Does not make you clean according to God. But we're going to find out. what. This is why the Bible is a fact. Sis. It says God is not dwelling in the church. Those practices is done away with. 
John the Baptist was paving the way for Christ when he was doing the water baptism. After Christ came, that's it. But the churches are still doing that. You're being baptized into various different religions. And look at our people still killing each other, robbing, the pastor's uh, daughter's twerking in the club, got three kids, no, 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 no husband. What is the church really doing? How do we clean ourselves? Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26. Read. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. Wait. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. Your temple. Read. With the washing of water. With the washing of water. Let's see what this water is that's going to put you in that good state to serve God. By the word. By the what? By the word. God's word is the only thing that can cleanse you from the sin. That's right. The water, the soap, everything is not going to work. The word of God is going to put your temple in that state where he can come in and make you understand this book. But if you're not following the word, it's not going to happen. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.